to another episode of CCAZ Live. I'm your host, Rupa Fazi Shabata, and today joining me on the show, I've got not one, but two lovely ladies joining me. Welcome, ladies. Hi, to my far right, I've got Tinom Sengi, who's a customer service representative of social media at Cassava Smart Tech, and she also happens to be the reigning Miss Contact Center. Wow, welcome, Tinom. Hi, Rupa, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And to my immediate right, I've got Miss Charity Tuso, who's a contact center consultant at CBZ Holdings, and she happens to be the 2019 Contact Center Agent of the Year. Wow, welcome Charity, how are you? I'm fine, Rofa, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Great, thank you so much for coming, ladies. No pleasure. All right, so we'll get right into it. And today we're talking about a day in the life of a customer service consultant. And firstly, how long have you been working in a contact center? Um, well, I have been working for a little, over, a little over a year. I started last year in May, so this is now my first year, second month. All right. And Charity? I spent four years, nine months now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite some time. So, vast experience there, huh? I can say so. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Tino, before you worked in a contact center, what was your thought of it and now versus to actually working in one? What is it like? Well, um, my interaction before I actually worked in a contact center was limited to an odd call and I would get assistance on a query. Mm -hmm. And I think the general consensus is that, I think people know that it's usually full of young people, vibrant people, eager to help. But I do think there's some negative connotation to mm -hmm. working in the contact center and that it's regarded as not important. Mm -hmm. um, but I can say with confidence, ever since I started working, that is really the opposite because you get, you are usually the first point of interaction with the customer and so you get insights that you wouldn't really have if you weren't in that position and so you get to know what customers want, their grievances and that's a very important um, tool and aspect that you can have um, for decision making and strategic purposes. Mm. And I'll also say, I guess now you have an understanding better from the agent's perspective. Definitely. It's a lot of hard work. It's mm. a crazy amount It's not about just shutting your demands. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> all right. Um, and Charity, being a, you know, a customer experience consultant involves a lot of repetition. I think lots of answering calls, social media, answering questions. Don't you get bored? <laughs> Yes, uh, I can say answering calls, um, it is a boring job. Mm. It is boring, as they say. <laughs> but uh, being, in, uh, being a contact center consultant, mm. you're only not meant to answer your calls. Right. You also get the opportunity to go out. Mm -hmm. For myself, from CBZ, we, I get the opportunity to go for seminars. Mm. We go for exhibitions. You mm. get to, new, you know, to meet new people out there. So you're not only tasked to only answering calls, mm -hmm. and then even when you're in the office, you visit other departments, mm -hmm. you see what they do, and you also get the opportunity to also do what they do. Mm -hmm. And then um, you get a uh, time to refresh yourself out there and not just answering calls. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Yeah. I think just adding on to that, you do, it's not as monotonous because like Charity mentioned, you get to visit other departments of the um, area so you do get a bit of um, difference and even with the calls or social media for example for me personally it's not like every call or person you're attending to is the same so there's a bit of variance even when you're doing the repetitive tasks. Alright, okay and how do you separate your lives you know in and out of the office out of you know that environment like if you're having a bad day for example? Um, I think well in a call center it's usually young people that are working there. So the interaction there really helps because mm -hmm. um, you always cheer each other up. Even if you're having a bad day, you can't stay that way for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And like Charity had mentioned, um, you do get to travel outside of the office while well, outside of the contact center. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like your, your whole life is you breathing in the contact center. You definitely do get other things to spice it up. All right, that's good. All right. And Charity, would you say working in the call center is like an entry point into ascending to other positions? I would agree. Mm -hmm. It is uh, an entry point for you to go up the ladder, mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. You have this opportunity of meeting uh, new people. Mm -hmm. You interact with different people each day. Mm -hmm. It's not every call that you talk maybe, let's say, to a teacher or you talk to a doctor, mm -hmm. you get to meet a different types of people. Mm -hmm. It helps you to choose a career path. 
At times, whilst you're assisting a customer, mm -hmm. they can share their experience, what they do from their end, and it definitely assists you in the future. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to also take a different path, and at times you also get someone who ask you, so are you going to continue being a consultant answering phones for 20 years until you retire? Mm -hmm. So it gives you an opportunity to open up your mind mm -hmm. and then you see what exactly you would want to do in the future, mm -hmm. which will give you maybe a, a stable income or which will go with what exactly you are starting for. Right. So yes. Tino, just to add to that, what would you say are some of the opportunities that can be derived from working in the call centre? Um, well, adding on to what Charity had mentioned, a lot of contact centers, um, some of us might for example, have the opportunity of have secondment mm -hmm. where you go to other departments for a speculated period of time and you get to do the activities there. So mm -hmm. you don't only get experience with the customers, you get experience with the other departments and you know which department suits you best. Mm -hmm. And while you're there, you get to make an impression. So you already that's another door open. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most important things to, again, just tapping into the whole, you have this wide knowledge of what customers want. So mm -hmm. you carry that knowledge and experience exposure you've got from being in a contact center to whatever position you want next. Yeah, I actually think you're better off starting off there because you have that experience yeah. with the customer, mm -hmm. which is the most important thing, right? Yeah, the humane touch is so important and it's overlooked. And it's, it's just really, when you know how to connect to the customers, I think that's the peak for any business, for any industry actually. Mm -hmm. It's not limited to services, any industry. Okay. And Charity, what would you say are the key performance indicators that you assist on? Uh, from our side, mm. uh, our key performance indicators, uh, first call resolution. Uh, we believe in uh, getting the customer assisted there and then. Mm. So that is a, a very key indicator to us. Mm. And then we also have a call, the number of calls answered per day. Mm. And then call duration. Mm. One should not take time on a call. At least assist the client within a certain period of time, mm. usually three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also part of it. And then we also have got um, the core abandonment rate. Mm. It's also a key indicator on our performance. Mm. How many calls have you dropped during the day? Mm. Have you managed to answer all the calls which have come through to you, mm. all the contacts which you have received? Mm. So those are part of the key indicators that we use for our end. And Tina, I think for you, you say you're in social media, right? yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure there. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely everything that Charity had mentioned, um, mm -hmm. our supervisors take that into consideration, response rate and time. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're, when you're on social media, there's also that aspect of, it's not just your supervisors who are monitoring you, assessing you, mm -hmm. it's really the public at large. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you're not having conversations with a customer in a DM or in the inbox, mm -hmm. you're having an, a raw timeline. And mm -hmm. so, the interaction is seen by the customer, their followers, mm -hmm. executives, literally anyone who has a phone mm -hmm. is really able to see what the organization is, how they interact with the customer. Mm -hmm. So everyone because becomes an assessor of how agents are performing. So I suppose you have to be like really on time with your responses. Yeah. You have <laughs> to be very careful. careful. You, you have can't to put be. a foot wrong. Mm -hmm. really. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you should also true. mind your language now when you're on social mm -hmm. media. Definitely. Because yeah. yes. mm -hmm. everyone's watching, yeah. everyone's mm -hmm. recording. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Screenshots. <laughs> just go around just like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Charity, can you tell me about a time uh, where, you had, where you were part of the level of service that you gave a customer? I would say uh, recently in this COVID, mm -hmm. oh, it was uh, something else I should say. Mm -hmm. I had a client who was supposed to, I received a call rather, of a client who wanted to be assisted on our internet banking system. Mm -hmm. But uh, she didn't want to be assisted when she called. Mm -hmm. She wanted to close her account completely mm -hmm. because she was saying she wasn't getting any assistance from us. So we had to agree. It was a, a do or die, <laughs> I can say. Mm. I convinced her that I would assist her. Mm. If I would uh, successfully assist, she mm. wouldn't close the account. But if I failed to assist, she would go ahead and close the account. Well, I and the I uh, <laughs> take the blame. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I'd say I would take the blame. Mm. So she then said, okay, from what you've said, you've convinced me, let's go through it. Mm. That's when we went through the system. And uh, fortunately for me, mm she managed to successfully transact wow. and everything went on well. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end now she was actually giving us praises. Uh, you people from contact center, you are so, you are so soft, uh, patient and everything, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. 
and she forgot about those in their account, and mm -hmm. we still have her up to now. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, just to add to that, there are different types of customers, difficult ones, the meek ones. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the different types? Yeah, um, customers, uh, yeah, it's definitely can be a challenge trying to know exactly what approach to take. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the important things is just knowing how to read a customer mm -hmm. so you can assist as best as you can. If they are angry, you let them you know, express that mm -hmm. and try to assist as best you can. I think there's um, customers who are definitely rude and I think there's a level of professional detachment, if I can say, mm -hmm. that you need to maintain. Mm -hmm. So that, because they are insults that can be very personal, so you need to be able to understand that this is not a me problem, mm -hmm. um, the customer is very frustrated and mm -hmm. it's at the end of the day that's understandable so you just need to know not to take them so personally. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like what you say there but is there a level of attachment maybe as well that comes with this? Yeah, definitely. I think it would be very difficult to be able to completely separate mm -hmm. your emotions because it's a very tense job, the human emotions involved and mm -hmm. sometimes customer will call you or come right to you and you can actually feel the emotion behind their words and sometimes mm -hmm. they're so frustrated they'll just invent and bring other issues that they're facing in their personal lives and so mm -hmm. you do become somewhat attached to them and it's um, in most some cases it's an advantage because you are driven to assist them the best way you can okay. because this is something that you can actually help with you mm -hmm. can't maybe not help with everything else that's going on mm -hmm. but this is something you can help with so that's you true. Charity, would you say the same? Do you sometimes get attached? I do agree with Chino. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a sense of attachment at times. Mm -hmm. But uh, we try by all means as customer consultants not to get really attached to a customer. Because mm -hmm. uh, um, honestly, you won't be able to go to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, might check it you will be thinking of that customer yeah. each time you are at home. That, mm -hmm. Oh my God. But uh, there are one or two customers where, where you talk to them They've got an issue for us. Um, we've got a subsidiary which is uh, CBZ Life. Mm -hmm. The calls that we get from CBZ Life are uh, maybe for someone who's lost a parent, a child, mm -hmm. a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, talking to someone who's already in that emotional state, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe the branch is closed at that moment. They need to get a premium, mm -hmm. uh, their premiums paid out so that they can attend to their funeral. Mm -hmm. You actually have to go to bed thinking of that person. Yeah. But yeah. the first thing uh, you do when you go get back to work. Mm. call the client and see if they've been assisted. Mm. So the, at times that's how you get emotionally attached to someone, but to, to a client, but uh, once the issue is resolved, it's, it's easy for you to move on. All right. All right. And to know what would you say has been your worst experience with a customer? Um, <laughs> those are many. Mm. Um, I mean, just the year that I imagine charity has a lot. Mm. But um, I think one that I can recently recall is um, a customer had come onto our, one of our social media sites and she had a query which actually didn't take all that long to resolve mm. but I guess she was just really frustrated she kept posting I think she made over 20 posts wow. in a few hours mm. and a lot of them, they were very colorful if I can <laughs> say they were vulgar threats wow. and very s serious language and mm. there were, I've, there's so many you get so many cases like that and mm. I've even heard of people being threatened with things like witchcraft and Whoa. it gets, <laughs> it gets <scary>. deep. <laughs> yeah, it's not something to take lightly. Mm. But um, you definitely get customers like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Charity, um, just to what she has said, so how would you keep yourself motivated? I mean, someone's threatening you, someone's saying <laughs> all these mean things. How would you keep yourself motivated to help that person? Um, I would say sharing. Mm. Sharing is the best. Mm. Learn to share with your colleagues mm. what, what you're going through, your experience. You might actually find someone who has actually had a similar experience with you, and mm. then they'll just tell you, no, you're supposed to do it this way. Mm. So it's, um, it's a very good uh, way to get rid of uh, maybe reacting to a customer mm. who is uh, taking you that far. Mm. Uh, just share with your colleagues. At times you just laugh it off. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, you can actually get to the next call, assist better mm. than you had done before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's possible, say this frustrated client, maybe they've been calling and calling and not getting the help that they need. How do you best help someone like that who has, you know, been calling, they've been calling, they're not getting the assistance? How do you help that person? That client obviously calls us, they are on the edge. Mm -hmm. the what they that's what they do, right? Mm -hmm. So you let, yes, there are certain threats where you get to do a professional hang up, mm -hmm. but I'll be calling you make sure.
Right. So at least uh, they will cool down and then when you call back, mm. they'll be in and out of all their issues. Okay. Mm. I'll be assisting you mm. for feedback. So you get out to go the extra mile. Mm. Um, and just moving on, what would you say makes a good teammate? At work to do and you've got to get it done. Mm. And I know it sounds really simple just saying it, but the execution is what takes it up a notch. Mm. And I found that to be particularly true, especially from how COVID-19 started. Um, mm. People obviously couldn't go to our shops and stores, so there was a, a crazy amount of influx of customers on our social media sites. Mm. And the volume of just queries that needed to be resolved was a lot. So for my teammates, it's, the amount of dedication and sacrifice was but a lot of work to do, we need mm. to get it done. Mm. And that really helps when you know you've got the support from all yeah. your teachers. Yeah. Yeah. And Terry, what would you say makes a good teammate? What and to get it. Mm. Uh, whenever you make a mistake, it's nice to have a colleague coming up to you and telling you, no, Ropa, you did it wrong. You mm. should have done it this way. True. So working with someone like that, at least you know you've got enough support within your department. Mm -hmm. I don't expect to get a, um, maybe a criticism from someone who I don't even work with. When someone who I work with mm. has mm. seen it. Mm. So mm. at least if someone who I work with is able to tell me, no charity have done it wrong this way, mm. it will actually give me confidence to keep on working with that person. Mm. And then it actually makes us all good team players. When mm. they also meet the same situation, I'll be ready to assist and will always be ready to assist. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Tina, you, know, you mentioned COVID-19, like we're in the midst of the pandemic. Right. And you guys in the contact centers, you share, you share a lot of gadgets. Mm -hmm. Did you not fear for your well-being, like, oh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Obviously that happened, I mean, especially seeing all the news reports of people dying. Mm -hmm. um, you know it's very serious. Um, so there's gen definitely that amount of uneasiness. Mm -hmm. um, but our employer, well, Kasab Smart, was very proactive in trying to mitigate the damage that could come with that and just ease us. There was a lot of PPE, mm -hmm. distributing of PPE, testing, COVID testing, um, wiping down of stations every few minutes. And the few times that we did have to go into work, they would provide the transport, um, have a cars with a certain number of people on the car. Mm -hmm. So they, in their proactive approach, it made us feel a bit better. And charity, did you also not fear for your well-being? Ah, oh, of course, the sixth sense always comes. Mm. I wouldn't want to lie. Mm. You've been in the office, you've been sharing uh, cups, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't usually share gadgets. But um, I would say CBZ was also proactive, mm. like uh, Kasafa was. Mm. It was so proactive, uh, we were settled from home in no time. Okay. Or we all went to work from home, mm. and then uh, the office was limited. Mm. But if you would come to the office, you had your PPEs, you had your sanitizers, mm. the temperatures were taken, everything was there to ensure that you are working in a healthy environment. So I would say we worked in a perfect environment and we had no cases at all. All right, that's great. I think as an employee, that's important to feel yeah. safe at work, right? Sure. So, yeah, it definitely affects you more than yeah, yes, definitely. All right, uh, Charity, how are you handling the new normal, the new way of working? How are you coping with it? Because I'm sure that you guys, you work in teams. You're used to being with each other. How is that now? I would say I've settled in now. <laughs> it wasn't easy, I don't want to lie. Mm. You miss the tea breaks, you miss the lunch breaks. Mm. You want to share what you have seen. Mm. It's very easy working on your station and you quickly tend to tino tino. You know, <laughs> but now you are in that little corner of yourself. Mm. You are there all alone in the house. Mm. You have no one to refer to unless you hold your phone on WhatsApp. Yeah. But um, I would say it's quite, it's quite adaptable. Mm. We have adapted well. Mm. We are now enjoying it, especially now in winter. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to wake, up so, have to wake up so early. Yeah, so you enjoy it. Yes, <laughs> so you have your breakfast in bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You have your work in bed mm -hmm. or on your table. It's just warm inside. You don't necessarily have to go out, feel the cold, you know. Mm -hmm. But we've settled in well. Mm -hmm. It's not like it. Okay. And Tina, how are you coping with it? Um, same as well. I mean, I think we're actually even talking about it um, before the live. Mm -hmm. um, you, there's obviously some benefits and disadvantages mm -hmm. to both sides. Mm -hmm. But another thing is you save a lot of money. You get to save yeah. a lot more. Yeah. And so it's. It's, there definitely will be challenges adapting, mm. but it's not something that's impossible. It's mm. something that is actually sustainable. It's not just 
okay, this is extreme measures, it's, it can be sustainable and a new way of doing business. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're getting a vibe. You guys seem to like working for <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> do you like working? Do you prefer it or you prefer the office? Home or office? Um, I, there are, <laughs> again, there are advantages to both. Mm. I really do miss um, the social interaction with your teammates. Mm. You know, you get to laugh and sometimes it gets really stressful. Mm. You can unwind a little bit. Um, mm. And so you get, I guess you have some sort of middle ground with WhatsApp groups and, you know, your mm. teams, many teams, you can get to laugh and mm. interact and see them. Um, yeah, so there's, there's <laughs> that that we're trying to sort of replicate being in, in the office environment, but from home. Charity. Funny enough, <laughs> we were talking about it today at work. Mm. That uh, well, when you're at home, you're more productive. Mm. You don't have the disturbances mm-hmm. which you get when you're at work. Okay. At work, it's very easy to disturb someone. Mm. Tino will be That's busy true. at their work. Mm. It's very easy for me to disturb Tino. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy for someone to come through into your office and disturb you. Mm-hmm. You all mm-hmm. just move away from your work, start looking at that person. Mm. Maybe they're just in for two minutes, but the eye always catches what was at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we are, we're actually saying it that so when you're at home, you're actually more productive than when you're at work. Mm. So it's, I, I think working from home, it's okay. So it's cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the, also the added challenge of, like Church was mentioning, yeah. um, how you basically have to be all these different roles within yourself. You don't mm-hmm. have anyone to refer to. Mm-hmm. So that's a challenge, but it's a welcome one because you, at the end of the day, you're able to assist the customer there, you're better knowledge and mm. yeah, you get to be more, you have a better tool set, skill set, sorry, mm. to go off. Right. The charity you spoke about working at home, you said you get more disturbed at the office. What about at home? Maybe kids, family? No. It's easy to put yourself away in a certain place okay. that you're now working. Mm. Um, for kids, you can uh, keep them entertained. Mm-hmm. Now there's e-learning, you can give them something to work on. Mm-hmm. So whilst they are working on whatever they're working on, you can also work from from the bedroom or from the study rooms. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to work from home without any of those, the, those disturbances. Okay. But uh, the productivity rate, I've seen that uh, it's more when they're at home than at the office. Is of it? course, the office mm-hmm. is called the office environment. Mm-hmm. We were usually, um, familiar with the office environment, but now the office is at home, mm. so we have to turn our homes into offices. Mm. Yes, it's difficult, but probably we'll get there one day. Mm. We are hoping one day we'll all be settled in, but yes, it's different. When you come to the office, you're now in the office environment, mm. but when you're home, there's that feeling of, but I'm at home. Mm. Let me just take it low, but you have to work. Okay, yeah, that's true. Okay, and you know, uh, now just looking at Zimbabwe, what do you think of customer experience, customer service in Zimbabwe at the moment? Um, <laughs> well, customer experience in Zimbabwe, I mean, we could talk for days on this. I think mm. we still have a long way, a long way to go. Mm. Um, mm. There are areas that we still need to focus on, but I think I'm very optimistic, I mm. can say, because I can see that it will be a service for me not to mention the efforts that are being taken, mm. the organizations are going the right steps. I mean, we have companies like CCAZ and mm. OmniContact that are putting customer service at the forefront and mm. striving to basically take the different strategies that are used outside internationally and bring them home so we can integrate them with our culture. Mm. And I find that as really positive because it shows that we are recognizing as everyone else is, that customer experience is extremely important and mm-hmm. we are trying to do it better. Okay. Yeah. And Charit, what would you say is the state of customer experience in Zimbabwe at the moment? I'll say yes, we are still a long way to go. Mm-hmm. I agree with Tino. Okay. But we are getting the... Mm-hmm. It's now different from how we were taking things before. Mm-hmm. I can say this was day from long back. Mm-hmm. Previously, we had those books where you would write uh, your customer complaints mm-hmm. or reviews. Mm-hmm. I think every shop or every service center had something like that. Mm-hmm. But now we have got uh, the social media, phones, mm-hmm. emails. It's very easy for someone to, to quickly tell you and for someone to quickly act on what you have said. Mm-hmm. For those books, I don't even know if they were read. <laughs> That's the honest truth. Yeah. I would ask myself each time I got some of them, do they even read those books? Mm-hmm. But uh, for, for, for the phones now, mm-hmm. 
obviously the person you are talking to, the moment mm -hmm. I call mm -hmm. cassava mm -hmm. and I'm angry about their service, mm -hmm. they will immediately act. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, we are changing. Mm -hmm. We are getting better with that, but mm -hmm. we are hoping to be there. Mm -hmm. We are not yet there. Right. We are still far. Right. And talking about change, let's look at innovations and new technologies. What do you think needs to happen to take contact centers to the next level in our country and in other countries? I think uh, for contact centers, if all service centers could have contact centers, okay. it would be very productive for all of us. And then now, I, for innovation, mm -hmm. if we could have um, virtual assistance mm -hmm. for our customers, it's very difficult to assist someone. Uh, you've given them an instruction that you're supposed to do this, and they're saying, no, I'm doing exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can actually feel it, mm -hmm. that the customer is doing the opposite mm -hmm. of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So if we could actually pro be able to provide virtual assistance, mm -hmm. I see what the customer is doing. Yeah. In our case, we've got internet banking. Mm -hmm. If I can see what the customer is doing on their internet banking, mm -hmm. I don't need their passwords. Mm -hmm. They log with their passwords. But at least I see what exactly they are going on, um, what uh, which steps they are taking. Mm -hmm. I'm able to assist them faster. Mm -hmm. And then it also becomes easier for them to work with someone beside you. It's different. Now we no longer refer someone to the branch like we used to. Mm -hmm. I have to assist over the phone. So I think if we could get that virtual assistance mm -hmm. in all our contact centers, mm -hmm. it would actually assist us. Okay. And you know, um, I, um, I do agree. I think virtual assistance actually ties into something bigger, um, AI more specifically. I think um, I, I know Otis has done quite a number of seminars on this, and I, I just I think it's something that's really exciting that people have been looking into adopting into the industry, and that's basically. Um, Usually, I think there's this hesitance with adopting AI. I mean, we already have adopted some, you know, with chatbots, mm -hmm. web sessions, mm -hmm. um, but just a more aggressive approach, I think, would be really helpful, not just in return of investment, mm -hmm. but in making sure that you are able to satisfy your employees better and in that way your customers are better um, assisted. And I think just the main challenges would be, you know, the cost of AI integrating them into existing frameworks. Um, but it's so far the developments that I've been there are promising. Mm. So yeah, I'm really excited to see where we go with that. All right, that's great. And just lastly, who is your role model in uh, customer experience and why? Um, my role model, I think, wouldn't really be a person. Okay. If I have an event that I always think about, um, I don't know, a lot of people actually know this. Um, the Tylenol case study. Mm. It's a case study that's it's a po really popular one. Um, mm. So Johnson & Johnson, I think it was 1982, they have basically Tylenol, which is a product of theirs, which is basically a painkiller. Mm. And so there was an incident where someone, that person is still not caught to this day. Sure. Yeah, um, mm. they took a couple of the Tylenol capsules and then lysed them with cyanide, which is a poison. Mm -hmm. And basically seven people died because oh. of it. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is a very serious thing to happen from a company's product. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be a pharmaceutical thing and now it's killing people. Mm -hmm. But uh, what's really impressive was Justin Johnson's approach to it. They immediately recalled all the products, mm -hmm. immediately told customers they had press conference. It's basically communicating, mm -hmm. very aggressive communication um, approach just to tell customers to be very careful not to buy recalling. And mm -hmm. that costs obviously millions of dollars in losses mm -hmm. for the company. But what is really admir admirable is the fact that that was second to the fact that our customers come first. Yes, so I think that's something that I just always try to remember so that whatever position I'm in later on in life, I can effectively communicate and influence how customers know that whatever company you're in, mm. they are the important um, aspect of everything. Okay, all right, that's great. And Charity, who's your role model? My role model is uh, Dr. Eve Katsikwa. Okay. She's the general director for Standard Association in Zimbabwe. Mm. Personally, I would love to be a contact center auditor. Mm. She has a passion and uh, standards and quality. Mm. She has worked in several African countries mm. and uh, all the countries where she has worked. But she has done a great job when it comes to standards and quality, when mm. it comes to service mm. or products, um, anything that is given to a customer or the public. Mm. So I would love to follow her steps. I know it will assist me to be um, a better contact center auditor mm. in the future. Okay.
That's great. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for coming and sharing with us. I've learned a lot. Thank <laughs> you for sharing your knowledge and your experience in the industry. The thank you for having us here. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, that's all we had time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again next week, Wednesday at 2 p.m. as we talk all things customer service and customer experience. Bye-bye.